Welcome to the 2020 Arts and Culture Awards presented by Arts Missoula. Each year, Arts Missoula honors individuals and businesses that have made significant contributions to the Missoula's arts and cultural landscape. I'm happy to present this award to John Combs, longtime music teacher, band director, and most recently, fine arts supervisor for Missoula County Public Schools. Thank you, Arts Missoula, for connecting art, culture, and community through education, advocacy, and celebration. May God bless you all. Welcome to another chapter of the 2020 Arts and Culture Awards presented by Arts Missoula. With this video, we present the Individual Artist Award for 2020. This award honors an artist who has shown exceptional achievement in the performing, visual, or literary arts throughout their professional career. I am pleased to present this year's award to Margaret Baldridge. Hello, I'm Margaret Baldridge, and I'm very honored to be receiving the Individual Artist Award this year. I look forward to the next time that I can see all of you either from the stage or just on the street. Thank you again for this great honor. Hello everybody, I'm Tom Benson with Arts Missoula and I want to interrupt uh, Virtual First Friday uh, with a little announcement about our Arts Missoula Star Award for July. Now Missoula is blessed with many regular folks who help make this place a thriving arts community. For the past few years, Arts Missoula has recognized one individual each month as one of those arts stars for their important contribution to Missoula's arts scene. With COVID-19, we took a little break, but we're back, and we're adding to our list of stars that continue to fill Missoula's horizon. Some of our stars are artists, some are musicians, some are business people who give generously of their time and resources. Some are volunteers, people who work behind the scenes and may not be known by the general public. Some are educators who help work with, our, with the arts, uh, with our students in our schools. Everybody is, has a place in our galaxy of valued arts supporters. So when the pandemic hit and everything closed down, including our schools and of course all the performing arts that happens in schools, one Missoula teacher took this opportunity to, to produce music videos with his colleagues and his students. Randy Zachner, fifth grade band director at MCPS, organized music teachers in the district to participate in remote YouTube videos of I Will Survive Distant Learning and also Imagine and Celebration. And at the end of the year, he produced a video of his fifth grade band students collaborating with local drummer John Wicks for a version of Hand Clap by Fitz and the Tantrums. Before we show it to you, I want to present this month's Arts Missoula star to Randy Zachner, fifth grade teacher at Missoula County Public Schools. So congratulations to Randy. Thank you, Missoula. It's my honor to be this month's Star Award recipient. As a Missoula resident since 1992, I am privileged and honored to continue the, the excellent history of arts here in Missoula. Thank you.
that you don't even know. outdoor mural program that is accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to enjoy art. We have the first 100 block of Missoula that was paved and the pharmacy building was saved when the Burke remodel was done and the Uptown Diner has become a beautiful gallery building in downtown Missoula. And we saw that wall in the alley. I think instantly I said, oh, we've got to have murals on that wall. And I think if I wouldn't have said it, Brian would have said it. And we both just, yes, this is what we must do. We initially planned to um, first hang in the fall of 2020, but with the global pandemic and COVID and social distancing and everything, we really felt like the world needed a little more brightness and just a little more hope in it. One of the great surprises at our opening for LA was that John Ingen was able to come out and we had a formal red ribbon cutting ceremony to open LA despite the pandemic and the social distancing. Everybody was very professional uh, but excited and joyful at the same time. We continue to celebrate art in our community, the value of art, the value of what it brings to the soul, the value of what it brings to the economy. Uh, the value it brings 
to artists and the value of free and fascinating expression. Todd is a featured artist of Radius Gallery and so he readily accepted to have his works used to brighten our walls. One of the biggest surprises for Jim Todd was not just to see his jazz icons blown up in large format in this alleyway, but one of his students and colleagues, Beth Lowe, a ceramist and emeritus professor at the university, came with her husband, David Horgan, and they were able to play a stand-up bass and an acoustic guitar right in front of the jazz icons, in front of Jim Todd. When we saw the structure, when we saw the drawing, it just said, this has got to be a mural program for the community. One, two, three, sniff! Another hope with Allay is to actually coincide with the Missoula Public Art Committee and the Downtown Association. Um, they already have started plans on doing a lot more street art and murals and just public art in general. And so we thought this really coincided well with um, bringing that to fruition. All of this comes together to provide a palette or a backdrop for activation of the alley, following along with Missoula's master plan, lighting, safety, and beauty within the alleyways of downtown Missoula. And it's just a great way to beautify Missoula's streets and um, give back to the community in a meaningful way. Uh, hopefully, LA can be a place again in the heart of the city that is a destination. Some place to come see, some place to remember, some place to take your selfie. Hi everybody, I'm Christine Groneberg from the Clay Studio of Missoula and I'm just finishing up my two-year residency so I'm having an exit show which will be July 10th through the 31st and we're having an opening reception July 10th from 6 to 9. Here is a little sneak peek of something from the show. Um, I've been working on these Cone 3 earthenware pots and um, I like this guy because I think he's kind of playful and feminine. Um, I'm really into these combed lines right now so I like this texture where the uh, glaze is breaking over um, the sharp lines and that red clay is coming through uh, just kind of nice subtle variation so I'll have um, more pots like this in the show I hope to see you all at the reception have a good weekend thank you Stop by Gallery 709 this first Friday, July 3rd, for Art on a Summer Evening, preaching the works of the Salt Miner Group, consisting of Stephen Glukert, Bev Glukert, Karen Rice, Catherine Mallory, Peter Kiefer, and Kathleen Herlihy Paoli. The show is up, I'll have the doors open. The artists probably won't be here, but I have other artists that people can check out as well. Welcome to Radius Gallery's Virtual First Friday. 
Our latest exhibit is titled, I Carry Your Heart, and features the work of Rick Jean-Dro, Mel McCudden, who are both from Spokane, and Gabriel Kulka, who lives in Bozeman. This video shows footage inside their exhibit at Radius and presents, in their own words, some of the motivations behind their work. You still have plenty of time to see the exhibit in person. It runs through July 25th. Enjoy the show. My name is Rick Jandro. I'm an artist by trade. I've been a professional artist, painter mostly, for well over 30 years now. grew up in a musical family. My dad, all, all of his brothers, my uncles, play guitar and banjo and violin and stringed instruments like that. I've been told that my colors are so vibrant and so I'm not afraid to use color and, and I always loved that. I have to create. I have to paint. I have to, uh, it's like breathing. But I'm a very visual person, and so this is how I express myself, through my hands. I wake up, and I see these things in my head that I need to get them out. If absolutely nobody looked at my work, enjoyed my work, or whatever, I would still have to do it. And fortunately, um, there are people out there that like my work, which is good but it's just something that I feel I have to do. I started when I was about 21 or 22, and I'm 77 now, so I've been at it quite a while. <laughs> Back in the 50s, I started just doing straight abstract things because that's what everybody's doing in those days, but I gradually kept looking for, a, for some kind of an image in the paint I sit sometimes for a couple hours looking at the underpainting until I see a suggestion of something, generally human or animal figures, but eventually I always see something. And uh, that's the exciting part when I first find that image. If I was asked to describe my painting, I'd say figurative expressionist. Sometimes anatomy is not quite correct, you know, there might be an extra joint in an arm or something, or the body's too big for the head or vice versa. To me it makes it more interesting to have it not quite realistic. What I'm after is a real strong presence, and it seems like the, the stronger vibes that come off a thing are from the darker subjects. You know, some of them aren't happy paintings. That's part of life, you know. Not everything's happy, so. And that's why these things aren't for everybody, and I can understand that. Trying to put something worthwhile into the world. I'm not sure if I'm on the right track or not, but uh, and besides that, I'm sort of addicted to it. I've been painting so long that if I don't work, I don't feel right. It's that, that much of a part of my life. Hey, I am Gabriel Kalka. So a lot of my work talks about this relationship between people and objects and memory. And of course, they're in some ways a fictionalized uh, version of this experience because, well, they're objects themselves. Um, most of the work is a meditation on manufactured human environments, you know, cities, houses, rooms, but also in our interior environments. Uh, there's sort of a, a negative relationship that people describe with objects in people's lives. It's, and I'm not really sure that it's entirely negative, although it can be negative. You know, we think about cars and, you know, the objects that we consider to represent ourselves. And uh, that's sort of the short story on what my work is about and where I start a piece and, and what I'm thinking about while I work on them. Thank you everyone for watching. Please visit RadiusGallery.com to view the exhibit virtually and explore the space from the comfort of your home. We are also open our regular business hours Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 6 and Saturdays from 11 to 3. We are sanitizing regularly and taking extra precautions to ensure your safety. We hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Ron Murphy, 
and welcome to Murphy Jub Fine Art and Virtual First Friday here in July. We're located at 210 North Higgins in the beautiful Higgins building in downtown Missoula, Montana. And I'm Kendall Jan Jub. And we're taking a walk through the flowers this month since June is such a great flower month. We're starting with a couple of my newest paintings of orchids. And not that we have this, these in our gardens, but I just love painting orchids and actually all tropical flowers. The colors and textures are just so fun to paint. A lot of these flowers are actually from the um, conservatory in San Francisco or my own dining room table. So Fox, get moving on. <laughs> okay, and I also love to paint uh, tulips, and we have a lot of tulips in our yard that luckily are, the deer have left for us. So I, I like to bring them in and, and uh, put them in bowls, and this particular bowl is an offshoot of a collection that my mom had that I, I have painted over and over again. She loved those blue and white bowls and vases. Now we're we love also to hike and, and enjoy flowers outside. So we lo I love to uh, hike the rattlesnake and all these are flowers that are really common up there that you've all seen, I'm sure. And especially lady slippers are one of my favorites. It's amazing how they all work together and uh, almost have a, a Walt Disney-like quality in the woods. It's, flowers up here are just incredible. And I, I love painting verticals also. And uh, like this painting, I started with the, the delphinium and wanted to work the blues with that red background and that uh, contrast and vibrancy. And um, then I picked other flowers that seemed to complement that. Um, I have um, a great joy in, in creating different pots of vases, and uh, the birds in this vase are fantastical, but the little cat in the terracotta bowl is one of our cats from years ago. And we're going to talk about one more flower painting, which is a pair with a delphinium. I wanted two tall paintings with solid backgrounds, and uh, with the red of the tulips, I wanted to play around with with green and kind of a cooler green that, that would create that vibrancy. And I also have a lot of fun with the vases. Uh, a lot of these birds we have seen in our yard or at the rattlesnake and ta taken photographs of and I use in all my vases. I love tucking birds in here and there. Well, thank you, Kendall. Yeah. Hope you all can come this Friday for First Friday or drop by the gallery sometime during the week. We're here from 10 to 5 every day. Thank you very much, yeah, Kendall. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Here we are. <laughs> so, we are at the Dana Gallery and um, we have some paintings here by a new artist, uh, Scott Switzer, friends father but we have made a big decision here we have decided that possibly since we haven't sold painting in quite a while uh, quite a few months probably I don't know we have decided to diversify and I think you all can probably understand why we have we have discovered this commodity here which serves two purposes it's modern art and it's Toilet paper. I gotta get I gotta get a drink of this because this is keeping me alive. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Anyhow, there's been some rumors going around town all the time that we have sold this art gallery. And those rumors may or may not be true. However, they are they are not true. It is true that we still own this gallery and we're going to hang on to it and all these great people we got here as long as I live which could be you know a week or it could be more than that let's see this is 
artist Kevin Redstar out of Roberts, Montana, our very own. Um, he is one of the leading five Native American painters in the country right, right now. Internationally recognized for his crow portraiture and um, his Native American teepees. He also won the Governor's Choice Award for Montana um, back in 2018, which is really amazing. He also um, is nationally known and Sotheby's based out of New York had him come into a flat a couple years ago and actually paint the New York City skyline for them. I, I'm just going to show you this Robert Moore here. So Robert was my favorite artist for years and years and years. And I just can't say enough about him. This is a bit of a departure for him. Um, and he was also a winner of the Idaho Governor's Award for Visual Arts. This is a, a great new piece by artist Garth Williams he, from Idaho. And uh, thanks to Robert Moore, he, Robert is such a great guy. And uh, besides celebrated artist, he is a magnificent mentor. And uh, when Garth retired, he told me, he's like, I'm moving into Robert's studio. I've always wanted to paint. And it's extraordinary to see how well he's uh, achieved that. All right, it's one of my favorites, um, our David Wilson, local Missoula artist. Um, he taught Spanish for quite a few years, but has always painted and um, has won numerous awards, humanitarian awards and whatnot. So anyway, love his work. That's all I have. Yeah, I, want, I just want you to know how much everybody's been pitching in here. For example, we have one of our best staff members just pitched in and started doing a job that nobody else would do. Oh, I got caught again. Oh, I got caught again. I've gotten so attached to this. It makes me happy, too, besides killing germs. Um, okay. But I'm, I could give you guys a demonstration while I do this. You just go... Round and round and round and it's been it's been kind of plugged up lately. For example, the other day I unplugged it and there was a shoe and then oh my gosh, what is this thing? My gosh. Oh, it's some kind of a thing you wear on your hat. Isn't it? Huh? It's dripping though, and it's probably not very clean water. <laughs> now I'll have to use Lysol again. So you guys can uh but anyway, thanks for showing me. Um, in the first place, if you buy more than $50,000 worth of arts, you get one half of 1% off. I don't want to forget to mention that. But then we have our young art collectors. Anybody 35 or under can take any painting home. They have to pay nothing down and they have over a year to pay for it, which is pretty darn good. Okay, this is um, a painting by Scott Switzer, who is originally from Billings. Um, uh, studied art with Robert Moore, actually, at the uh, uh, Pasadena Art Center, which at the time, at least, was the top um, teaching facility in the country. And then Scott and Robert have been friends forever. And Scott's lived almost everywhere. And now living in Sand Point, um, Idaho. Here we have young artist Caleb Meyer, um, a Missoula local here. Um, and he is one of our youngest uh, painters, professional painters here in the gallery. A couple years ago, he won um, the 21 under 31 artists feature in Southwest Art, which is pretty amazing. There's a lot of fabulous artists that they featured in there. Um, also, Caleb was a, uh, he studied under Robert Moore down in Idaho for some time. So you can really see uh, Robert's influence as far as the application of paint goes on here. But uh, Caleb is really taking his own, uh, his own eye and just is running with it. We miss Missoula! Check out our website. Check out our website.
Check out, yeah, check out our website, and we may do a quick run here of our basement, so you, you can see what we have in our basement, which is a treasure. Next time you visit the Danny Gallery, come visit the Treasure Trove, our second level down here in the basement.